So we're gonna put together all of the techniques we've learned about factoring large polynomials and use them uh, to, to help find factorizations. So, so consider this degree five polynomial. That might seem overwhelming, but we have all the tools we need. So combining synthetic division with the rational roots theorem, we can find the list of potential rational roots and we can test each and every one of them to see which ones are roots. To speed up the process, we can use things like Descartes' variation or Descartes' rule of variation of signs, and we can use the upper and lower bound theorem. Now, I like to take a quick look of uh, Descartes using Descartes' rule, right? Because sometimes the following observation can be very helpful. Uh, sometimes, maybe not. I mean, it depends. Descartes' rule can sometimes be very helpful, and sometimes it can be completely useless. Um, let's take a quick look. If we look at variation of signs, it goes from a positive to a negative. That's one variation. Um, goes from a negative to a positive, then a, ne a positive to a negative, then a negative to a positive, then a positive to a negative. You'll notice in this situation, it varied signs each and every time. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Uh, did I say the right number there? It switched variations every single time. So this tells us that the variation of signs is going to be five. Um, that tells us that our polynomial will either have five, three, or one uh, re a positive root here. Now, what's critical here is that if you look at, since it varies each and every time, um, if you swap, if you swap this to be f of negative x, you just switch the signs, you're going to get negative x to the fifth, minus 5x to the fourth, minus 12x cubed, minus 24x squared, minus 32x, minus 16. Because the variation turned out to be five, the negative variation is necessarily going to have to be zero what you see right here. And this observation here is really critical because this tells us that if the negative variation is, is zero here, then there's gonna be no negative roots. That is a super time saver. If we start looking for negative roots, we are wasting our time. So don't do that. Uh, we, we'd be better off looking for positive roots. So then if we apply the rational roots theorem to that context, the rational roots theorem is we're gonna be taking uh, divisors of negative 16 and divide them by divisors of 1, which is just 1 there. So we're going to get as our divisors 6, uh, we'll start with the small number, 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. I didn't do plus or minus here because I knew by Descartes rule of signs that I don't need any negative, I don't need any negative roots there. Uh, so we just want to work on the positive ones. And so what, which, which one do we choose? Like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. I might try something in the middle, just kind of see how it goes. If you try 4, you're going to get something like the following. Let's make sure we down, write down the coefficients. 1 minus 5, 12, negative 24, 32 minus 16. If I tried 4, uh, we could bring down the 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Well, of course, going to be 4. Uh, minus, uh, 4 minus 5 is going to be a negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is going to be here negative 4. Plus 12 is an 8. Times 4 is going to be 32. 32 minus 24 is 8. Right there again. So we try this again. 32 plus 32 is 64. And then 64 minus 16, uh, that should be a 48 right here. So when you look at this thing right here, um, you look at the coefficients at the bottom, uh, the denominator is just getting bigger, or, sorry, the bottom row is just getting bigger, 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 bigger. Now there is a negative sign right here, so the lower, uh, the upper bound theorem doesn't automatically apply, but noticing the coefficients are just getting bigger, 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 this suggests to me that, well, one, we know for a fact that four doesn't work. Four didn't work at all. Um, but this suggests to me that maybe I should try something smaller uh, because Four was barely, barely had a negative in here. He had a negative one. If I tried something like eight, this would be even exacerbated. Uh, this would be much, much worse, right? If you tried an eight right here, you're going to get a three, and then these numbers are going to be bigger, bigger, bigger. So the fact that we almost had all positives on the bottom suggests to me I should probably try something smaller. I should try one or two. And whichever one you prefer, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to try just one just in this situation here. Now, one thing you can do is if you want to, you can erase the numbers you have before. You don't have to keep every failed attempt here. So I'm just gonna kind of erase this to save just a little bit of time, a little bit of space on the screen right here. So I'm gonna try one this time. So you bring down the one, one times one is one, minus five is negative four, times one is negative four, plus 12 is eight, times one is eight, minus, uh, 24 is a negative 16 times 1 is negative 16 
uh, plus add that to 32, you get 16. One times 16 is 16, plus 16, you get zero. So we see that x equals one was in fact work. My, my guess of trying something well, something smaller actually paid off. So now we can factor f. Whenever you find a root, stop and make a factorization. You're gonna get x minus one, because one turned out to be successful right here. And then look at the depressed polynomial quotient. We're gonna get x to the fourth, we go down a power, minus four x cubed plus eight x squared minus 16 x plus 16, like so. Um, if we were to run the rational roots theorem again, you get the exact same numbers, uh, one, two, four, eight, 16. Four doesn't work anymore, so we're not gonna try that one. Uh, but one thing I should mention is that just because one worked doesn't mean it won't work again. It could be that one is a repeated root. And so it is worth trying again, but don't try it with the big with the original polynomial. You have to try it with the quotient because if you try it with the original polynomial again, you're gonna see that one is a root. One could be a repeated root, so we need to try it with this depressed polynomial. So if we start the process over again, using the coefficients from the previous one, one, negative four, eight, negative 16, 16. Like so if we try one on the quotient, we bring down the one, one times one is one, minus four is negative three, times one is negative three, plus eight is a five. Uh, five times one is gonna be a five right here. Uh, add that to 16, we're gonna get negative 11. And then one times negative 11 is negative 11. You add 16 to that, we end up with a positive five. Um, and we get, we get well, the one didn't work the second time. So that just means one's not a repeated root. So if we come and record our potential rational roots, what we can say is the following. Uh, so we had one, four, sorry, one, two, four, eight, 16. So four didn't work. And now we've exhausted the possibility of one. Now, when we checked four, remember, we didn't, we didn't have the proof that four was definitely a upper bound, but it seemed really close. So I'm very suspicious of 16 and eight. And so my likelihood would try two next. That, that's what I feel like trying because one no longer works. So if we try this again with a two, right? Now, when you look at this one right here, you might think that, oh, this is the lower bound, right? One, negative three, five, negative 11, five, it's alternating. Again, the, the lower bound theorem only applies to negative numbers. The upper bound theorem only applies to uh, positive numbers. But it is somewhat suggestive to me that I should try something bigger. It's not a guarantee. Uh, because one is not a negative number, but it, it, it does seem to suggest that's the direction we want to go in here. So erasing the numbers that we had, I'm going to try this again with two. So if we try two here, bring down the one, one times two is two, minus four is negative two, times two is negative four, plus eight is positive four, times two is eight, minus 16 is a negative eight, times two, is a negative 16, which gives us a zero. So two, in fact, did work. That's good. So now let's write the factorization we have this time. So we have f of x equals x minus one times x minus two. And then what's left over is gonna be the cubic polynomial x cubed minus two x squared plus four x minus eight. And so then by the rational roots theorem, we could continue to look for roots where two would be a thing to check. We could try two again. Right, and if you did that, if you tried two again, you get one, negative two, four, negative eight, trying two here. Um, you're going to get, bring down the one, one times two is two, that negative two plus two is zero, times two is zero, bring down the four, two times, uh, two times four is eight, which then turns out, oh, two is in fact a repeated zero, and this gives you the quotient as well. But I'm actually gonna try this from a different perspective. Synthetic division worked out great here, but when I look at this cubic polynomial, this makes me think, I have four terms. I think I could factor this by groups, right? If you do factor by groups, you take x cubed minus 2x squared, uh, and then you'd have a 4x minus 8. If you factor out an x squared from the first group, that leaves x minus 2 behind. Factor out a 4 from the second group, that leaves x minus 2 behind. And so then you see that it's factored as x squared plus 4 and x minus 2, which is the exact same thing synthetic division gave you. And so then the factorization of f of x turns out to be x minus one, x minus two turned out twice, so it's a repeated root, and then you get x squared plus four, uh, which that would, the roots of that thing are gonna be plus or minus two i. 
Um, so there's no real roots of that polynomial right there. This is the real factorization of the polynomial. And so the thing I want you to get from this one is, you know, combine things like the upper or lower bound theorems, Descartes' rule of signs, to help you speed up the process of synthetic division so you don't have to try every single number. You can really, you know, kind of zero in on the roots of the polynomial if you choose your guesses strategically. Um, another thing to notice here is that there can be repeated roots. That's perfectly fine. And when the polynomial gets smart, small enough, your elementary techniques of factoring might come into play. And you might choose to use those instead of synthetic division because um, the factoring of groups works out really nicely here. Um, and, and so I would suggest using that. Keep that on your radar whenever possible.